Seeing the Mike Tyson versus Jake Paul fight was tragic. He was lethargic, struggling with an ulcer, knee pain, lacking vitality, and he had no explosiveness. And everyone keeps blaming his age. Well, he's 58. He's just too old. But everyone is wrong about that. With the right strategies, Tyson could have reversed his biological age, healed that ulcer, boosted his lung capacity, enhanced his heart rate power curves, restored his muscle fiber recruitment, sharpened his reaction time, eliminated his pain, and even regenerated his spinal discs from his prior back surgery. He could have knocked Jake Paul out of the ring, even at 58 years old. And in this video, I'm going to show you the cutting edge science behind how he could have done it. This is groundbreaking science, which nobody is even talking about. Hi, I'm Brennan Henry, the founder of the Institute of Peptide Science and Scientific Augmentation. And I just watched the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight, and the saddest part was this. Mike Tyson still has it. On defense, he showed flashes of brilliance. His reflexes and his movements, those were classic Mike Tyson. But when it came time to strike, his vitality and explosiveness just wasn't there. He still had the body, he still had the skill, he just didn't have the fuel. And in this video, I'm going to show you how scientific augmentation could have brought him back to his explosive best, even at 58 years old. Mike Tyson's knee pain could be another major limiting factor in his mobility. Things like planting his foot for a punch, or even jumping back to avoid a strike to his midsection. There was one specific shot he took which highlighted some instability on his feet. And this could be due to age-related declines in statokinetic resistance, which is something I'll touch on shortly, but it's also likely tied to his knees, especially because he said he had knee pain. For context, I've seen some of my $35,000 coaching clients regain significant mobility after meniscus tears and knee surgeries using peptides alone, with one client who had stage 3 chondropathy of the knees who couldn't run without pain, but after incorporating peptides and synergistic drugs which I cover in my peptide mastery course, he's now training for marathons. In Tyson's case, we'd want to evaluate the knee more closely, but peptides like Cardilax could be a game changer for him. Cardilax has shown benefits for improving arthritis of the knee and spine, and reducing pain, while Pinealon has shown promising effects in reducing cartilage breakdown as well, and improving neuropathic pain. Pinealon induces gene expressions of irisin, preserving cartilage and even reducing intervertebral disc degeneration. It also activates PPAR-alpha and GDF-11, while also inhibiting caspase-3, which can facilitate spinal cord recovery as well. This could be important if Tyson has any pain or reduced mobility from his prior surgery, as the ability to lean back to avoid blows is important. Now to give you an idea of Pinilon's power, my mom's dog recovered from total paralysis due to spinal cord injury using Pinilon, and two years later, that dog isn't just walking, it's actually running. Truly incredible. Now let's talk about improving Mike Tyson's heart rate power curves, resting heart rate, and heart rate variability. These are things that naturally decline as we age, but they don't have to. And in Tyson's case, it's even more critical because of the history with cocaine. Since it can accelerate vascular aging, meaning his blood vessels could be aging faster than they should. Now, that's something we need to address to improve his overall cardiovascular health. So you may be wondering, why it's so important to lower resting heart rate and heart rate under load? Well, not only will it help prevent maxing out the heart rate, but it can even help improve the reaction time, and that's something no one has talked about before. Here's how it works. During each heartbeat, your body's sensory perception is actually dulled. For example, if you touch your finger to an electrical pulse, your brain is less likely to detect during the actual heartbeat. Or, if you're staring at a black dot with a gray outline around it, you might not see the outline as clearly as you would between beats. The reason is that your brain processes sensory input differently between each heartbeat. When your heart rate is lower, there's more time between each beat, which gives your brain more time to process sensory input in a heightened state. Now, our heart is made up of around 40,000 neurons, and it, are, it is these neurons which send signals directly to your brain through key pathways such as the vagus nerve, the stellate ganglion, and even nerves from the spinal cord. And these signals directly affect the autonomic nervous system, which is the system that controls your body's responses to stress, recovery, and your overall balance. Now, when your autonomic nervous system is functioning at its best, it means that your heart rate variability, the measure of how much your heart rate fluctuates, will be higher. A higher heart rate variability is an indicator that your body is in better shape to handle stress, recover more quickly, and stay focused under pressure. And in Mike's case, heart rate variability can be a game changer for fight performance. Here's the thing. I've seen these kind of improvements firsthand, not just in myself, but in my clients as well. We've achieved phenomenal resting heart rates and heart rate variability levels. And the way we do it? Peptides. Let's talk about two peptides that can really make a difference for Mike. Vesugin and Pinealon. 
Vesugin has been shown to significantly enhance stem cell proliferation and differentiation. This means it helps the body repair and regenerate at a cellular level, especially in the blood vessels. This is crucial for heart health, especially when dealing with the effects of aging or substance abuse. Then there's pinealon. In athletes, pinealon has been proven to allow them to maintain the same power output while lowering their heart rate by 10 to 15 beats per minute. Now, what does this mean for Mike? Well, he'll improve his overall efficiency, he'll get better oxygen delivery, and increase his stamina, all while lowering stress on his body. If you're curious about how these peptides work and how they can transform your own athletic performance, recovery, and heart health, well, I dive into the details in my course titled The Life-Changing Magic of Peptides. And if you want to learn more about how this can help you, just check it out. You can go to scientificaugmentation.com. And by boosting heart rate variability and improving heart rate power curves, Tyson can not only perform better in the ring, but also recover faster, handle stress more efficiently, and get back to doing what he does best, fighting at his peak. Third, his punches lack power. By the time we hit our 30s, our bodies naturally begin to lose muscle mass, and it's about 5-8% to per decade. By 75, we can lose up to 50% of our fast twitch muscle fibers, particularly the type 2A fibers that generate explosive force. These fibers are exactly what Tyson needs for those devastating punches. And as he's aged, he's lost some of them, meaning the power behind his strikes has naturally diminished. But it's not just the muscle fibers. Motor units recruitment is also a big factor. Motor units are the link between the nervous system and the muscles. And as we age, our ability to activate muscle fibers with maximum efficiency declines. So even if Tyson's muscle mass is still strong, his neurological signals to recruit fibers quickly and powerfully aren't as sharp. And this is also why aging impacts things like gait variability, which is the way that we walk, and this changes as motor neurons are lost. So in Tyson's case, while his muscles are still there, his ability to recruit all those fibers explosively is compromised. Now, there's another key factor here, which is the brain function. And given Tyson's history with cocaine, weed, and alcohol, as long with the repeated head trauma, neural damage is a real concern. His brain's ability to recruit motor units for explosive action is likely compromised. So to regain speed and power, we need a strategy to improve brain function, particularly when it comes to reaction speed and motor unit recruitment for his punches. This is where things like neurofeedback and photobiomodulation come in. I've used both on myself and my clients, and they can be incredibly effective in improving brain health and reaction time. But there's also the peptide route, which can do some heavy lifting here for sure. For example, a while back, my friends and I had a little competition with the Stroop test. This is a test which measures cognitive flexibility, attention, and mental control. And some participants had maxed out their scores despite tons of training. But after implementing the peptides I recommended, I saw their scores improve by 11%. And this peptide also enhances the statokinetic resistance, or the ability to maintain balance and resist destabilizing forces. It's something that was used in aerospace, but is also perfect for combat sports like boxing, as it helps with balance and stability under pressure. And I go into more detail about these peptides and their mechanisms in my Peptide Mastery course. You can find the link in the description, or just go to scientificaugmentation.com. If you want to dive deeper into the science and strategies for boosting both physical and cognitive performance, I highly recommend you check it out. Next, Mike Tyson's gastric ulcer is a big one. If he heals it, his fatigue would drop, he'd absorb nutrients better, and he wouldn't feel sick all the time. Now, there are a few things that can cause ulcers, and we want to figure out which one it is. First off, H. pylori infection. About 30% of people in the United States have this, though they don't always feel it. It can cause ulcers if he has it, and we can treat it with antibiotics like clindamycin. But there's also a peptide which can heal ulcers quicker, known as chonlutin. Then there's candida overgrowth. That's a fungus that lives in your gut. When it grows too much, it can lead to ulcers, and we can test for this with a gut test. And antifungals and biofilm disruptors like caprylic acid and EDTA are great for clearing that up. Another thing to look at is parasites. Now this one's crazy, but parasites can cause ulcers. They damage tissue directly, and they also mess with your immune system, causing inflammation. If his eosinophils on his blood work are high, that's a type of white blood cell that shows up to fight parasites, we can treat it with medications like mebendazole or metronidazole. Then there's Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. Both of these can cause chronic ulcers, and we can rule them out with a colonoscopy. If it's either of those, they can sometimes be managed through elimination diets and even immune system reprogramming, which most people consider to be impossible, but we've successfully done it for our clients who had autoimmune issues. Now, lastly, there's a possibility of antibiotics-induced damage. If mics ever use certain antibiotics, like fluoroquinolones, they can mess up the gut microbiome, and this can lead to things like C. diff infections. 
So to fix for this, certain probiotics, like Saccharomyces boulardii and Lactobacillus. And of course, there's the extreme colon cancer, though thankfully this is somewhat rare, but we could rule it out with the colonoscopy too. There's this peptide called chondolutin, and it can completely heal gastric ulcers in just 28 days. And when combined with certain additional peptides, like the ones in my Perfect Peptide Starter Kit and Expansion Pack, the results are even better. But here's the key. We want to test first, not just guess. We need to do gut tests, get his full medical history, and run some biomarkers analysis to figure out the root cause. And once we know what we're dealing with, we can get to work on fixing it right away. And, by the way, the cool part about Chon Lutin is that it doesn't just heal the ulcer, it's also stress protective, which is huge for Mike, considering that the stress he's been under for years. And on top of that, it can boost your lung capacity too. And that's something that's especially helpful if lung function has been reduced with age or smoking in the past. I recall Mike mentioning that he used to smoke weed. Lastly, improving mitochondrial function is essential in his case, because the mitochondria play a central role in delaying fatigue, enhancing cellular health, and even reversing age-related DNA changes. They're especially abundant in cardiac and skeletal muscles as well, with over 30% of gene transcripts in the heart and 28% in the skeletal muscle encoding mitochondrial proteins. The brain also requires a high degree of mitochondrial function to operate properly, making it a very important point for improving performance. Now, as we age, mitochondrial function naturally declines, and this is even with exercise, because key factors like irisin and MOTC, which are involved in mitochondrial health, decrease with age, and less of them are produced from exercise. So we'd want to implement some mitochondrial-enhancing peptides and supplements for this to address any type of metabolic impairments he may have, such as insulin resistance but definitely not with metformin in his case, as it can reduce the VO2 max gains from exercise by about 50% in many meta-analyses. Another class of medications would be much more suitable in his specific situation. In conclusion, the cellular functioning of every organ system declines as we get older, but the good news is that we can reverse it. Even if Tyson follows all the basics such as exercise and nutrition, he'll still need the most effective strategies for his unique situation. It all starts with the full diagnostics and the total health and performance transformation. To learn more, check out the description below.